And just like that, Galorias are able to enter right back and get that second map against Amani. Welcome back, everybody, to Valorant Ascension, where we continue to see this back and forth between all the teams. The first map, it was 11-13 going the way of Amani. The second map, it was 11-13 now going the way of Galorius and Staribon. This is kind of... We started having the feeling that this is how we could go after the, after the map number one. But, I mean, I'd love to see this Galorius team find some success on this series. Yeah, I love the way that Galoris is really controlling the pace of this game and Sato playing that really explosive and fast-paced Neon and they didn't even give M80 a chance to even breathe in the defensive half. There's a lot of overheat moments on the side of Galoris, especially when we saw that like M80 was making a slight comeback. But um, definitely a dominant half. Definitely these rounds could have been a little bit cleaner, but I'm really glad they ended up closing it out. I didn't even know if I would call it slight comeback. I was, I was <laughs> seeing the vision. I was seeing what M80 were cooking uh, into that second half. Five rounds in a row. They were about to take the series to overtime. It was amazing. And honestly, Gompers, if they were able to close that out and take it to overtime, that would have been the most M80 possible thing to do. Uh, but it was a good opportunity for Galorius to close it out, to go dominant, go aggressive, as we saw how explosive that last round was, to make sure that we're now to heading to that third map. It was also a good opportunity for them to taste what defeat would taste like for a second. Like, they could have literally lose this whole entire series if they didn't pick it up in the last couple seconds. And of course, who was it going to be to pick it back up? It was, in fact, going to be their duelist. So it was very nice. It's very nice that we finally do get to see Sato, like, step it up. I, I was expecting it to happen because for Neon to be placed in this game, you have to have a lot of... A lot of help with your teammates and i think they did prep him for for a pretty good victory here he definitely shined above the rest he had his moments obviously the ultimate coming down last usage lots and lots of clutch rounds um so for south i say gg for him it's a uh, one of those maps where we see a lot more balance coming through for the set of galories we were honestly worried after we saw the map number one where it was only uh, that one man play had taken place but now we see a little bit more of an even ground in, when it comes to supporting and also getting the kills yourself for the rest of the squad but now we gotta say that if you're on the side of m80 if you're one of the m80 fans in the chat you, you have nothing to worry about that's what i'm gonna say because as the casters were talking about yesterday it was a very similar scenario and were pushed to the third map it was that map of haven when where they absolutely dominated reta so there is a scenario stay one where we might be able to see the same thing happen again honestly yeah haven is known to be like m80's playground like they look really comfortable on the map they destroyed reta the other day 13-4 meanwhile you have galotis which this map has been kind of a hit or miss for them they destroyed tsm but they definitely got beat by ak uh, I think if they can control the pace of this game just like they did in Sunset and force M80 to play to their game, they can definitely take the win, but it's going to be def definitely difficult. Mm -hmm. My question here is, can M80 bleed? And not in just one map, but one whole series, Gumpers, because your, your prediction... It's looking pretty good. I mean, the, the chances here, we're in a 50-50 for the last map, we, and, and on, suddenly it's like, wait... What's Gompers cooking this whole time? Dude, I've been cooking. Hear me out. <laughs> Every pick I choose, it seems a little sus, but there's always a belief behind it, all right? And it's it literally simply, simply, for me, in this particular moment, it was not on purpose. I'm not going to lie. I meant to pick M80, but I think Alara's, they're shining, like, above the rest. And to be completely honest, this team, for me, they're a very, very strong contender, but I wasn't thinking this strong. In, in my eyes, I would think all Knights would be the one to beat M80. They would be the one to take a map off of them, this and that. But it's starting to to click a little more. Like, there's more people out, more teams out in this tournament that will take on M80 and possibly put them in the ground. A team that is is considered the best in this situation is now slowly slowly losing that balance losing that focus and it only took them yeah they almost made that comeback they almost did come back but it takes a win to really be satisfactory and now we're at that third map of the series and there is the possibility that Galoris can take it all I mean I think we tend to forget that Galoris is the number one seed coming out of Brazil and I feel like they're really showing up like they're really showing their potential right now they're showing us like, hey, this is what we can do. We've came mm -hmm. here to play. Like, we didn't have a good start, but we are here and we are making a statement. 
I, I love that you remind us of that because it's easy to forget when you think about Amity and you think about, oh, this is a team that, are, that you know, is the favorite to win. It doesn't matter who they're going against. They should win. But this is the number one seed that they're going against. And winning this for M82 means a lot because then at that point, they would take down both of the number one seeds for Brazil and Latin America if they take down Galores today. But for Galores, the number one seed, they have been struggling to get the first win. And I mean... It would be a flex to say that the first win that you get is against M80. So the expectations here are high. And also, honestly, I feel like the confidence for both of the teams here, Gompers, should be high as well as we head into Haven. I agree. I, I honestly, there's not a part in me that doesn't believe both of these teams think they're going to take it home tonight. If anything, like after that performance from Galoris, they, they know what they did wrong. And they definitely know what to fix from here on out. So going into Haven, they could honestly be stronger than ever. Sato had such a great setup. They're definitely going to aim towards that this game. And I'm very much expecting Lucio to, to now step it up even further because he knows he's having a good day. And honestly, that's all you really need here. A good day, a good series, a good map, even a good round could be enough for both of these uh, teams to be able to win this series. Staribon, uh, is there anything that you're looking forward to when it comes to watching this map of Haven? Do you think it's going to be as dominant for M80 as it was when they were playing in Zleta? Do you think it's going to be a little bit closer now that Galoris is more warmed up? Um, I think it will be a little close. I'm also curious to see if Galoris will make a comp change. I know they usually typically play the Jet, but I don't know, Sato was just really in his element on that Neon. And he really was just controlling the pace of the game. And I feel like he could probably do the same with Neon on Haven. So I would love to see that comp change, but I know it's really last minute and it's really hard if they didn't prep, so. Is that, is that your favorite composition in Haven right now, the, the Neon, or is it more kind of depending on the team and Galore is fitting that? I feel like it really is team dependent, but I feel like with how strong Neon is, I love to see Neon implemented, especially because I feel like Neon is really good for like that A main control on the attacker side. You know, just being able to like stun all of A main and take that control away, or even like just being able to entry into sites with that extra stun really can can make a difference. Uh, we, we've seen it from Dan Tadeus, for example, on, on this map of Haven with the Neon running it down, even flanking and managing to get some <laughs> insane kills. So I don't know. I, I wouldn't see a world where this wouldn't make sense for these specific teams, especially because uh, Gompers, we've seen this M80 team run these slightly weird ideas and compositions and simply work out for them. Oh, no. Yeah. Like, Honestly, it's been a reoccurring theme in North America, too, with the weird comps and, and, and just seeing these these different tactics people are trying to pull out of their pockets. But I I, I, I believe in the strategy. M80, if anything, is probably the most, I'm not going to say the most strong-willed team in this tournament, but they've definitely showed their resolve uh, moving forward. And they're, again, they're silent, but they're calculated. And I think with whatever they choose, I'm here for it. Well, let's jump into the Blacklight Agent Select. Let's see what the two teams are going to be running on Haven, if things are going to remain the same, or they're going to look a little no? different. And the, the questions mm. have been answered right there. <laughs> but this is this is for Galores, the Sato on the jet, but it's also Kualanub on the jet, it's the air bun. See, I think that, honestly, M80 might have the upper hand here. Being a team that has as much experience as they are, they it's a mirror comp. They know the ins and outs of this comp. They know what goes well, what doesn't work. They know the weaknesses and the strengths. And I think for a team that's a little bit more team-oriented and more coordinated, Galoris is going to have some trouble playing this default comp into M80. And a, another point to mention as well is going to be that look show going against Xander. You mentioned it. You mentioned it before, and it's just how these two controllers play out and Gompers, how aggressive they want and they can be when they need to. I think here too, we're going to be able to see a little bit more of action from Urenga, which I feel like hasn't been getting a lot of credit for the plays that they've been able to that they've been doing for the team. Like they're so silent in the background, but that's the reason why Glorus is able to thrive the way they should. It, it's such a big factor of Yurango and the calls that they're making as the initiator to help everyone else out. 
Well, as we said before, winning this for Galoris would mean everything. Saying that the first win that you got in Ascension once again was against M80, but on the other side for M80, the favorites, they're trying to stay undefeated and be the only team that continues to be undefeated in this group stage. Let's find out who's going to get the win once again with their casters is Shift and Wyatt. We got a map three again, and whoa, throw the expectations out the flipping window. Got a mere matchup here, Wyatt. Um, I think the desks are very appropriately so kind of highlighting the fact that, yeah, this has been a staple for M80, even in the face of like the craziness of ISO deadlock on this map. They've stuck by this and it's worked out for them, including a big win versus MXS back in the regular season. And of course, most recently, as of yesterday, the win versus Reyna. 100%. M80 were so impressive against Reyna. Reyna were running that Viper Sky comp and were thoroughly dismantled on yeah. every round by M80. It wasn't a flattening, like, if you watch, I don't know, All Nights, for instance, roll over a team, you can imagine what's going on, right? We've got the Neon, we've got Dante running around, just gunning everybody down, crazy plays. It wasn't that kind of domination. It was every single round, M80 were looking like they were playing with wall hacks. They were just so locked in to what Raider were trying to do every single round. So if they can bring that level of play against Galoris, I mean, uh, they are definitely in trouble, but they really heated up on map two. Yeah. Sato specifically really heated up. So. I would say that's the guy you are looking at to do that again. Um, no better venue for Jet than Haven in a lot of regards. It is like OG Valorant. Yeah, I mean, it, the, it the, really legitimately, is. the trailer for the game featured Jet on this map doing updrafting <laughs> things. So it doesn't get more stapled than that combination right there. Absolutely not. Got Koala going to the agent that he's been playing for years here in NA with, I mean, it's just similar cores to this team, whether it was M80 prior to that, playing on Ghost. You know, this, this guy's been competing for a long time, just always like a hair below the teams you kind of consider to be firmly in that tier one and has just been hanging around there trying to break through that glass ceiling. And he's come so close. And this might be finally the chance. M80 here, one map win to essentially lock them into the playoffs. It would be 3-0 and at that point. It would be tough for them to <laughs> slip out of that and not make it. So Yeah, facts. That's absolutely facts. What, what, what their whole year has been kind of leading up to, this is an important map for yep. it. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to frame up that, like, if Galoris or Galaris lose this matchup, that they're out completely, but the road is not great. The only thing that they do get is that they will play some regional opponents that they've seen a couple of times already if they do lose this, but anything after this is a must win. Uh, for a team like Galaris. Whereas for M80, like we have already talked about, you win this series, you're pretty much already in playoffs. I mean, three wins should get it done, especially considering the state of a handful of teams at one and two. And then, of course, Galaris sitting at 0 and 2 at the moment. So it does feel like three wins is enough to get you in the playoffs. But definitely. I, I, and yeah, I mean, Galaris being 0 and 2, listen, they're not out of it yet if they're 0 and 3, but they'd have to yeah. have two dominant wins, get through in a tiebreaker situation. So. It's a sit. It, they would end up being in a situation where things are out of their hands to some extent. You never want to be in that spot as a competitor. Obviously, it doesn't yep. even need to be said. So, a win here of the utmost importance for Galoris M80 as well. Their whole year on the line in these games, always feeling the weight of that as Koala's on this tight angle, just jiggling towards me. Now, opening shots just gonna tally some intel. Koala do. Of course he wants to, but look, show. Says not so fast there, friend. Oh, yeah. It didn't even look like he I know rounded it. the corner. Well, here comes the approach in Paranoia, trying to hold off as much as humanly possible. DCJ still concealed, but the problem is he's got no information on where anyone else is inside the site. And in that, it will be Glorious with the numbers to come out on top. Net last one left. 1v3 situation. Trying to step just into this dark cover. Does he beat the angle? No. Luke Shell may have saw a barrel. That's enough for him to tally three in the opener. And Gallers will take the pistol. They've been good in the pistol. Like, just not just today, but overall in the tournament, they've been great. 
definitely. That first shot from Blue Joe is just insane. And I like as well here from Galoris. After they find that first kill, they execute onto the site, but, you know, realizing that M80 were trying to flood back in, they do prioritize just fighting with their man advantage and trading out for each other. And they do a nice job of it, you know, wrapping deep towards graffiti, flanking Nismo back site, and then just swinging together around default. Well done to take that early event. Stacked up long. Bit of a fire race squad. Ghoul, how about that? A little bit of a secondary bit of abilities will land. And that gives Koala a chance to dash forward, get a bolt on, turn it into three. Aldrone also tags on the root. It's still on the hunt. A secondary bit of information is now that the Luke shows nearby. And M80, they don't have to play for it if they don't want to. They've got all the information and the spike. But they still will regardless. That is a massive momentum shift early and a statement as the Blacklight Thrifty comes through in round two. Oh no, the Bulldog pickup dash is a devious activity. That is the, also just the confidence on that is so sick. Koala Noob totally turning the tide for his team. And just like that, one-to-one -one economy in the favor of m80 on defense <laughs> that's crazy i mean those were just straight up open duels from long with classics i know it classic i know it it's the old-fashioned classic firing range pardon okay nismo just says i'll try this it works it's moments like that where you just feel like you're god's greatest gift of valor like flat out when things like that start to hit and now all of a sudden you've got great information on this play over towards sewers. Sato's trying for it. Nismo a little fade away <laughs> with the Guardian. Oh, come on. He just doesn't need to see anyone. Two kills. Has literally not put his eyes on an enemy. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> The game is so easy. Just click. <laughs> oh, and Xander's even got a perfect paranoia set up if he gets any sort of a sound cue. BCJ, Aldrone could get caught. Nope, not, nope, nope, not Back happening. M80 a. looking like they're coming out with a little bit of vigor. Here in the beginnings of map number three, clean shots leave Luke Show by himself. Yeah, nice spray transfer from Xander, even just to kind of get a little bit of confidence back in his own aim. Had a rough map, too. It's actually the bottom of 30 seconds the board left. for both teams. Had only eight kills, 17 deaths. So player that is typically so standout heralded as one of the best in the NA Challengers scene. A player that the community are constantly asking why the hell is this guy not in partnership? <laughs> it was definitely an off map for him. So getting him back in the swing of things would be more than beneficial to M80's hopes of closing this out. It's just so funny when we had that conversation at this stage of the year because we said the exact same things about the guard. It was just like, dude, these guys should be there. They should have been there. And wouldn't you know it, once they get there, they have a hell of a year. <laughs> So, I, yes, I know. It's, it just feels it's like it's par for the not course. Not too bad. Not too bad of a year for them. Here is the full buy, though, from Dolores Koala Noob of Note. The operators are so oh, yeah, on yeah, That's yeah. allowing everyone else to get proactive <laughs> as a unit in mid. You're nothing. What? Dude, stop it. I mean, it almost makes you sit here oh, and wonder, like, God. where was this last map? It, it, it's just, this is such an M80 thing to do. It, we said the same thing about, like, MXS as well, kind of at the tail half of the year, where it's just like, why was this not here all the time? There's so many moments of brilliance. It's just consistency could sometimes be the bane of existence. Not a problem here early in map number three. Not at all, Xander. And I'm waiting to jiggle from the alarm bot, but it got covered up. Luke showed using his own dark cover, so it wouldn't get triggered on them while they walk through, but it... Did not end up mattering. Sanders still gets the peak, gets the kill. Nismo hunting for more. Dusted by his breach counterpart, but really all for naught with Arango. 25 HP. No hope. Yeah. Just do what you can. But this puts us in a very strange economical spot, which is often the case after an anti eco gets bested by a thrifty. Left. But this is usually the round that you expect some sort of a bounce back. So now all of a sudden, Galaris is going to be. In dire straits. And you've got an op and honestly an outlaw that could still hold into the next round and be very significant. So it's off to the races here early for M80. 
And it's not stopping anytime soon for Xander, who finds another massive round three in total. And yeah, you're going to put yourself in a position to just completely boost the eco early for M80. Yeah, 2K into 3K, only one player lost. The outlaw, like you said, going to find value now that Galoris are back on a bad buy. Scoped weapons will be obnoxious to deal with. And just within those little setups, you can just see the discipline instilled in M80 that is really evident. Oh, on yeah. How, how Xander was playing B there around the alarm bot, and then even just continuing oh, yeah. to play it in the four on one, Arango 25 oh, HP, and he's just waiting to paranoia him. They're just not giving anything away. They never take duels for no reason. Yep. Everything has a purpose. Yep. A lot of intent is definitely the case. Nat, ooh, a little bit of trouble here. Good follow up from Sato. Turns that into a weapon collection. Good stinger play, but pardon me. Spike Koala down. Noob once again, just a quick shot over. And now he knows he's got the spike. He's got assistance here too. Xander's gonna be playing with him deep over towards the backside at C. A little bit of a collection off the from the shadows comes through though for Luke Show and a plant will ensue at C. Really cool play from Xander and Koala, and equally so. Heads up from Luke Show. Nismo now goes for the rolling thunder. Could be the catalyst of the round win. Right in the picture. And Luke Show, even Player while stunned and concussed, doesn't make a difference. How about this for a counteraction? BCJ, last one left, and no, not gonna happen. So it's Thrifty on either side. This time the Black Ride Thrifty goes the way of Gallerus. And we're back to within one, and that kind of mitigates all of the early significant pressure that we've been established by M80. It's a very cool eco round strat. That dash updraft into window forces net back, and he goes straight into the fault line. Teams have really cooked up so many little eco round plays on this map now that are constantly being thrown out. I swear you see a new one every day. They usually involve something through garage or like a B to C or B to A, some kind of crazy fast play to catch people out. It works there. Take flight. Puts things back into the world of contest in terms of the eco, although there are some power weapons on the floor here for M80, including the big bad Odin oh, go over sometimes. BCJ holding on to that dash into B. Not often you see B approaches with full weapons in hand, but it's actually working out nicely simply to the planted. fact that Koala Noob is limited as he's just got the op and maybe knives. And this timing is going to feel a bit odd. BCJ scouted, just trying to get to work on the spam. And this is taking too much time. Honestly, for M80, this, yeah. they gotta go. It's so slow. I mean, on A side, they're not even pushed up to the door yet. They're still caught in link. Yeah. And that's just both B players dealt with. The A side players were ponderous, to say the least, in the choke. I mean, real disconnection from M80. Uncharacteristic of how regimented yeah. they are in full retake situations. It's just odd. And I, I mean, again, the uh, distribution between site hits on full purchases, you would think is pretty even between A and C, but B is not as common of a spot. Usually that's like an anti-eco, low limited buy kind of play where you can try to force your way in, isolate a kill, find a weapon or something, but that's just good avoiding, avoidance rather, of the operator. I mean, if he's not going to play at top of the boxes, then okay, we've got ourselves at worst of 5v4 from somewhere, and then yeah, there's just never a time where the defense can force the uh, post-plant setup to really be moved. We'll see if M80 can recover from this. They've still right got there. enough to buy into this round. They've still got that operator on Koala Noob, but if they lose here, the economy will be broken. Uh, here's that orb wow. tap and it's faded into the peak. Reactions from Sato, swift as ever. Well, they get the angle back, but it comes at a severe cost. And as Nismo gets planted in towards the tight corners at sea, I imagine at a certain point, Net will want to try to re-rotate re back over towards at least Garage. The A defense is, again, kind of very individualistic. You watch this way, I watch that way, and hope we get the right response as Galarus is going to get to work trying to clear out some space to run sewers. And then it swings out, goes down. Meets the firing squad. Nismo's only real hope is that they don't check for him, but he tries to be the one getting proactive. Goes down and time for a save. Yep. 
And this has been really good in terms of response for Galaris. I mean, the anti-eco thrifty hurts, but good composure, good clean conscious of what you need to be doing on this offensive side has turned out nicely. That's now three of the last four for him. And it's been convincing. Was... It's been all over the map. I, I mean, if you're at 80, you're sitting here scratching your head like, where are they? Like, what, what is the actual template for these offensive executes? And once you've lost that operator presence you have on defense early on a first sight map, yep. you're going to have holes exposed. And with so much time to play with, the galleries just kind of picked them apart, searching for information. That's why, you know, Nets jiggling out, trying to see what's going on. It just wades his way into the crosshair, much like Kowalanu did earlier when he was baited by that orb tap. Another repurchase going to be forced. Luke Show having himself a good start to the map. Him and Sato both. That is the duo. Yep. You want to talk about wind condition? Look no further than those two. See what M80 can buy up around that one saved rifle. It's actually going to be attack pause taken by M80. Good time I to say. do so. Yep. Yeah, things are getting a bit out of hand and it all started with that eco round win just a cheeky little strat called from galoris mm -hmm. that burst through garage deep push with the stinger that round so i mean you need to stabilize here i think even more worrying than a round like that frankly where it's just quality going down a six shot from sato of course they did bait him out which was nice but i'm more worried about that other round that happened with that five on five yes. retake that was so slow and then they go for it and the two sides on the two players on B link, two players on or uh, C link rather, and two players on A link were just completely off with the timing. They didn't push together. That's what I'm actually worried about. Yeah, and I will say I think just to give credit to what Galar Show put together on that post plan is they don't have to worry about window because you've got one player playing so far deep in your spawn that you can set up your post plant on grass stairs without having to worry about someone coming from the flank. Let's have some. So fun. it makes that play through link a little bit more difficult to manage but we'll see what we get here knives are going to be out for koala Noob. everyone else on full purchase hunters fury they're ready for both sides but it is the difference maker of the rolling thunder for the offense and an aggressive setup into sewers here for m80 if this gets scouted out i would not be surprised to see your angle pull the trigger and maybe even try to catch some players off guard but all of that point comes up moot as the defense will rotate back a little bit deeper into sight and this is also an M80 that are saying we will go for the full C retake. So still yeah, taking yeah. confidence in those set situations as they always do. Oh, Quality pushed no. up, but goes down first again. BCJ tries to capitalize with the Hunter's Fury, but Luke Zhou is just unstoppable getting two. I'm not going to lie, that Hunter's Fury has almost smoked that favor. <laughs> Luke Zhou right there just completely blinded any line of sight. Rude. Isolation on the Nismo. Perfect. Now it's 3v2. Evil playing in sight. May not have an opportunity to use the Hunter's Fury to save off this post plant. May not need to, though. Urango, a bit dicey, trying to get the flash out instead of the plant, and that works out perfectly. Wow. Good commitment. And how about Gallers? 5-3 up, and a lot of the damage coming sequentially round after round. I, I like these moments from... Uh, galleries when they're getting onto the sites, but they're not just forcing the spike down. They're finding these moments to just fight, swing together, get all those kills. Two times now they've done that. Small thing, little decision in the moment, but it is nice to see in this 3v2. I mean, look at that. BCJ and Net are just crunched in the corner. That round was nothing too complex, ultimately. True. It's just Luke Show, the gunplay of these guys, the aim of Luke Show and Sato right now. It's just, it's just crazy. Pretty good. You know, not bad at the toy. Well, sometimes you just walk forward yep. and kill Koala Newt while he's staring at the yep. angle you're on. Starts to lead you to believe you can just pull out playbook number one, which is just hold W, point and click. And Koala Noob's trying to do a little bit of that. Sees the majority of the Galarus offense and says, I'm not interested anymore. Paranoia at the ready for Xander, just in case there was a secondary peek through Sewer, which M80 have put a lot of focus on. And Galar said, sure, why not? There really hasn't been any early aggression towards A here yeah. for the offense. This is basically the same setup yeah. that M80 had last round, though, as the round is actually getting mm. lower on time than the last we're seeing an adjustment, right? Which is, uh, you know, Xander kind of moving over towards B, but still C, just vacant. M80 
content playing it for the full retake, as they were on the last round. Finished. Boop. Okay. Garage is no longer an option. Ooh, Shock Dart actually does get a bit of a tag. Oh, this is bold from that. Thought maybe it was just going to be a Shock Dart with no follow, up, but there was a player watching, so the trade is good, and Galaris will get free entry to see. Spam shots are great, though. Your angle forced off near now. All of a sudden, I mean, you're trying to contest this. Paranoia is a little bit too late. Luke Show gets two. Down, but the spike still stays on the ground. Lockdown at the ready. Hunter's Fury is ready, but Galar still has to find entry into the site. And Xander's watching at the crossfire is good. And M80 will take the 4v4 and get us to just a one-round differential. Uh, that is vintage M80, honestly. They love to flood multiple players through spawn with no fear, as they just did there. Even when the choke is getting mollied sometimes, I've seen them still just run through it. They're getting hit by a snake bite against Raider. Right? They're vulnerable. They just don't care. They are so fast, so confident on the floods there. That's why they leave that C site vacant. Brilliant retake. Starts a little messy, but it doesn't make a difference. And here we go. Heavy stack through sewer. Dark cover gets placed. That's enough to get the angle. Shock dart out just to see if there can be a bit of a pause towards any offensive pressure. It does catch some of Sato. Koala Noob off back in hand. Locked down out. M80 may want to try to challenge a little bit of this. And the damage is being tallied. Oh my goodness, Koala Noob. He whiffs on his dash. And so now all of a sudden, it's not just vacancy on the site, it's also a 5v3 post play, and Galarus should be able to get six. Spreading not going on the retreat. Pause. Good kill from Xander as Nismo turns back to play. This aftershock will be frustrating to deal with. Fault line here available as well. Nismo's trying to creep in, but gets caught. Player standing. Oh, Luke Show, not quite able to save his friend's life, but. Doesn't make much of a difference in the scheme of how the round will tally as Scalaris do hit a bit of a go trigger. That's the first time we've seen speed towards A from this offense. And it works out nicely. I mean, a little bit of botched movement from Koala, sure. The lockdown also forces a bit of chaos and panic, but that's just good execution from Galaris. Yeah, that's really it, right? Though. My ultimate is ready. <laughs> just keep going. Just talk, talk through it. Just talk through it. It didn't happen. Just talk. That, that, uh, that lockdown, though, that really was just the chaos creator m80 want to try to fight forward in that moment because you can oftentimes you know take that risk and the team that puts down the lockdown doesn't expect someone to stay in it and fight but yeah things just got really hairy with the movement koala noob struggling to then get out struggling to even get a decent shot off with that one way that was placed mm -hmm. very awkward and now the economy not looking too good for m80 they have that one rifle saved, and there was a decent bit of bank on someone yeah. else. Get out of my way! Actually, just throw the rifle over to Koala Noob. I will say as well, just kind of keep a note on this. The op not being effective for M80 is a huge detriment towards what their normal win condition looks like. Definitely. Drone now into the A side, being followed up. Not as explosive from Galoris as... Rude will have an opportunity to fight off this turret. No, doesn't try to go for the swing. A bit more patient. Locked down at the ready for net, but I don't even know if you can be bothered to even consider using it. Not with the numbers the way that they are. Ball and trying to get something done, but Rude is just doing such a nice job of doing this little stick and move type situation. Takes down two. If Net can connect here, that might be an opportunity to get the lockdown going, but whoa, it's Sato in your face! And that might be all you need. He's done it before. <laughs> He'll probably do it again. And now Koala Noob, who has been able to retrieve a rifle, will just sit back and let the round come to an end. It's just so active Yikes. from these Latin and Brazilian teams that have come to this event. Just dashing in off the fault line there is so sick. Sato's so good in a situation like that. But a lot of credit really to, to Rude in that round. Last round is to the live and, and, and does so. But yeah, it was that play you were calling out of Rude watching on the flank. The way he was just moving around really sly with it. The one on Xander was easy, but then the follow up on Nismo. Koala Noob and Nismo trying to team up on him front and back with that fault line coming through. Didn't connect. It was a good try, but Rude was a little bit too good with the movement.
And I think it's just unexpectedly so. I mean, Killjoy, you get a kill in your spawn connector, and then all of a sudden he's mid grass. <laughs> it's just like, what? Yeah. That's some, some swift feet there. A little bit of pressure here for Galaris over towards Garage. Aldron followed up. Good cover of smoke. This could lead to a quick burst on as Luxia will teleport deep in towards sight. And once again, M80 are going to have to play retake. They're still holding on to the lockdown, but there are a lot of spaces that they need to clear out here. And honestly, I don't even know if the lockdown's worth it in this round. I mean, you have to because it's round 12, but what is it really going to get? Uh, Evil Kick is just outside of garage, ready to break the lockdown yep. whenever it does come through. Oh, well, here comes the defense of it. Hunter's Fury is out. That will land. Rude will take some friendly fire, and that's enough for Net to find the quick kill. BCJ on for the response. The issue here is going to be the post plant defenders long, though. And this is why. Durango can just tap away. Help now on the way. Aftershock pushing him into a bit of a corner. Diffuse gets to halfway. Keep that in mind. Next fight on the way. That's the last flash being spent. 1v1. BCJ! Long range shot lands! And it may seem like just a simple round, but 7-5 is going to feel a whole heck of a lot different than 8-4. And yeah, bite that lower lip. Oh, yeah, it, it really will feel so different for M80. My God, that was close. I mean, honestly, if it weren't for that unintentional damage from the Hunter's Fury onto Rude, who knows how that would have went? Because I kind of forced him into the open and then he died. A silly little thing, but you'll have to put that... Dumb little moment in the past. Head into the next half. I swear every game in this tournament, aside from like the first one, is just as close as it gets. Absolutely. It, it, it has actually just been all bangers every day. It is pretty insane. <laughs> this, this tournament has been high quality. No, you're not you're not kidding. Now, again, let's put the macro into perspective here. For M80, it, either side of the map has been favorable towards them. About 60 plus percent win rate on both. But Galaris, over the course of the last couple of days, have, on average, won the offensive half 8-4. to four. So, again, you throw the numbers around a little bit. Could move things a touch. Only 33% win rate for them on defense, so that has to be better. And you have to figure that, hey, we're not videoing this map, so we're going to be talking about it on a pretty regular basis. So, let's see what adjustments they've been able to provide over the last 48 hours or so. To get themselves prepped up and ready to go for this matchup right here. Need to have it. Have to have it. All right. A little bit of time here for the teams to take a deep breath. Get into this second half. I mean, considering how good M80 were on defense against Rada. I mean, I'm, I'm just checking again. Yeah, they were able to get eight rounds in that game and then just string five in a row on attack. I'm so I was expecting a little bit more from them here, but I think Galoris did a great job too of really mixing up the tempo in a lot of those different rounds. Like that fast eco round win and then some slower rounds and then upping the pace towards the end. I mean, speaking of pace, it looks like on B immediately Galoris want to go for a mid walk down. Well, Sentry Turret immediately denied. Galaris looking to step aggressively in towards mid. And I talk, I mean, it's aggressive. How much of this does Xander see? Opening shots towards Sato are decent, but it pushes it back to Stutch. Paranoia comes out. Good fault line behind this is the follow up. Decent for M80. It's still Mixy, but Nat through the wall. Good for a couple. And that's going to favor M80 completely. A little bit of hijinks here in the pistol for Galaris does not work out. And there's going to be a plant here at B. Or they can just go to A. I guess that's fine too. Coming back. That paranoia was just the source of the unraveling of that <laughs> big push from Galoris. What did that connect on? Like two, three players? And then the re that recon that came in after, and then the aftershock as well. What utility you can bring into a round on a pistol was all expended yep. in that moment. Bye, and I, I mean, look at the discipline right now as well. Uh, just really quick, like, <laughs> this one dinks him. He still just leaves. Yeah. <laughs> like, no risk being taken. I will say as well, it's actually a, a nice micro moment from Xander in that fight to instead of backing up towards spawn, he tucks himself into a corner to where the angle from Sato is no longer there. There's no yeah. immediate follow-up yeah. from the player that was on the actual ledge itself, which I believe was Luke Show. 
So it's just one of those things that's like he puts himself into a spot where he survives an extra second and a half, and that's where all that utility comes in. It's just a nice little micro moment. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And it just yeah, makes it so that gal those down. Galores players, excuse me, have to commit deeper, actually, yeah, like get into that yep. window, right? Yep. So yeah, it's a, that is a good point. It's just the smallest things there from Xander, who's just done such a fantastic job bringing this M80 team to this tournament to the level that they're at. Well, yeah, here it is. It's just that follow-up. Everyone just gets stuck in that corner, and it was Luke Show who was trying to follow up on the information from Sato. So, yeah, just trust the teammates are going to throw the utility that they need to. It's a quick little adjustment, and it works out nicely for the pistol. Now it's just down to can they find the follow-up to get us back to a level footing. They did get e in the first half, but I don't think it'll happen on this one with the classics. I mean, I say that now. I don't want to curse them, but... They should be all right. Koala Noob, of course, going to have the outlaw on round two. That always is a priority. He will always be buying into that weapon, and Galore's aware of it. Yep. Classics. Oh. Chunk taken out of Sato, backside of the site. This looks like it's building for the anticipations of a C hit. I think especially with the damage tally, it's, it's going to feel pretty easy, I think, to just take down Sato quickly. But he does reposition nicely. Oh, what a prediction. Yep. <laughs> that that is That is a decapitation if you've ever seen one. The proverbial guillotine just removing head from body. That is tough for Sato. The three remaining. We'll see what they can do, but M80, again, they are content with playing this, safely going down C-Long, abusing the range of their weapons, the outlaw to fire if anyone comes in and taps the spike. I mean, again, no risks taken. Yeah. Okay, 7-7. Seven, seven. Bonus is going to be pretty hefty, though, for M80. Outlaw is going to pack a punch. The Guardian, Bulldog, Phantom all making their return back in, pending there's no crazy antics here at the end. And Net who I imagine will be purchased for, is going to have pretty much whatever you want. So it's everything you could possibly want here for M80 to possibly win a bonus. Galaris will have a chance to finally get this defense set up. And it's been two straight grass stairs pushes through mid. Neither have particularly worked out for him. So let's see what they have to offer now that they finally have some weapons at hand. And we'll see as well where M80, how they try to set up Kuala Noob, where they set him up. What line he's going to be taking. Mm -hmm. And how aggressive will Galoris get on defense here? I mean, obviously on Sunset, it's one thing to be aggro when you have a Neon and a Breach. And you can still do that with the Breach and the Jet. Just have to see Koala taking this peek in mid. So it's up top. You know, is an available target. Won't get one shot at though. It's all heavy armors for Galoris. Oh, Sato. A little dance with the devil here. Drops off the mid container at B. Lots of uh, Killjoy utility around him. So there's no reason to get too aggressive. Plenty of safety net. Dark cover replaces the angle at mid. So everything is starting to come up nicely here for the defensive gallery. It just comes down to where is the next test going to start to build as the sentry turret is deleted in the garage. Plus the aldrum looks like it's going to be at least some sort of a hit towards C. Joe just getting in position for the paranoia using that okay. smoky place top C to cross and M80 will get forced back or just intending on always pivoting quickly into be all of that killjoy utility expended rude can't really get any he's actually wow. feels forced in because of the aftershock at least does get his MCJ pushed off from the initial plant Sato follows Five, up as soon as the aftershock follows in so now it's just down to who wins this next set of battles as Gallers have gotten back into the B site spike down Dark cover is going to be expiring here in a moment. Evil, Sato, still playing the crossfire setup. Xander, trying to teleport to the high ground. Looking for an angle at it. We'll get deep. The flash will allow him to get in safely. What a brilliant play, but it doesn't make a difference because Galar still had a player sitting on the outside watching for it. Oh, it looked God. like for a moment, and we caught the perfect angle of it, that that teleport was going to break the defensive setup, but the one thing that was yet to be watched was that C-Link side. I mean, that was, a, that was a cool attempt. Yeah, it was. 
That was definitely a very cool attempt. But Galarus do what they need to do, which is just fighting close at the choke. Just one person monitoring that was enough. Playing that smart, Rude has a Bucky into this round against the full buy. Not ideal, wants to be a little gremlin though for Garage, but it's all pressure in a lobby. They're all lit up. And Luke Show will get one and then teleport away, although the trade is good. BCJ keeps it at a 4v4. Now A Wong will be completely lost here for M80. Any fight back for that will likely have to come at the cost of an Aldrone or something similar. It's just clear space. And here's the idea with that Bucky, is if we fight for A, we could push them elsewhere. Yes. Maybe push them into Garage right into this shotgun. Oh so we'll have to see if they maybe do end up trying to prod into that area of the map, if they maybe go for C split to end things. Well, here we go. There's that Aldrone to re-clear out A long. That little bit of extra shot through mid is just a creation of noise. Defensive Aldrone spent to make sure B is open. And oh, Luke Show. Did he see it? He definitely saw one. Evil up top. Will be smoked out. Wow, the damage. Significant from Koala Noob. As Evil Kick will have to just hold back a little while longer. But here, look at the push through. Rude has snuck out of garage doors. And now he's got them pinched up. The defense can stay planted at A. Luke Show's going to voluntarily move into his own dark cover. There's the first. And oh, he doesn't finally get the connect. So it all rests with Evil Kick, and he really can't stay in the sight. And Rude, the Bucky, or the Classic, neither are great. And M80 will get a post plant 4v2. Sato would have to make some magic happen. I'll say. Trying to get... Oh, so just doubled up in the smoke again. <laughs> it's always the pair of Xander and Koala just taking over the dark covers, evidently. That was a nice little two-man swing to get into the smoke, expecting that someone could be in there. Great way to clear it out. Now it's Rude recovering a Vandal just on the save. Low money. Yep. For everyone on Galore, so every weapon they can get, they need desperately. That's why Koala's on a bit of a hunt right now. We'll out. find an engagement. Oh, oh boy. That oh, that is tragic. Those are, like, and I know it's, like, a kind of inconsequential kill, but, like, when that happens to you, like, you're in a rank game, you just want to throw your PC out of the out of the freaking window. It's just like, <laughs> what do you mean when I just look away, he peeks that? Ugh. So annoying. It's just as frustrating as it gets. So Glorus are on a terrible buy right now. M80, an opportunity to get the lead in this game after being down for quite a while. They just have to contend with a few sheriffs. That really shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be. Galores <laughs> down mid. Oh my. Already. Oh. Uh, oh wh what? I was gonna say, Nat just got all the information he possibly needs. I mean, it's a sheriff shot right next to me. Still, not gonna land. As the opening first one is good. And oh, the damage up top to Koala Noob. A shot or so away. And the flash is gonna keep Galores into contesting this, but they get held back by a fault line. Sato's the only one left alive inside the dark cover. They know he's there. And yeah, he'll get one. And whoa! How does he get two? There's no way! And now it's just out of Koala Noob! Swaps from the classic into the reload! Evil just needs to hit one shot! Recon Dart goes out. Koala Noob tucks himself into a corner. The timing on the peak! Oh, the savior! Of the round is Koala Noob, a little 1v2 Zippo clutch. What's happening? Oh, I mean, I was dead certain that Evil Kick was going to kill Koala Noob at the end there. I was also dead certain that, I don't know, any number of players were going to kill Sato. Actually, the protagonist in the server right now. How is he surviving? How is he being offered so much time to just patiently tap away four headshots connected with the classic? Come on. I mean, he just barely skate away from that, Ooh. barely get the 9-8 lead. Standing ahead. That's a chunky shock dart to open things up from Galaris. Deals with a lot of the armor plus a little bit of the health pool for MAD's offense. Rude on the corner. Whoa, net right around the opposite side of the doors. Everyone stays alive, though. And A-Long has been owned by M80. That's voluntary, by the way. Galaris have 
allowed this to happen, and instead, it's a delayed push through mid. This is so cheeky. <laughs> no. All right, just a straight up phase from Rude, and that's before Koala can even get up on the <gasps> angle, so. My oh my, but they don't, they have no idea that Urango's here. Trigger discipline, that works out for the first PCJ, still stays covered, and he knows I gotta get out of here. Al drone gonna be spent here though, up close and personal. Tag comes through, he knows that Rude's on the corner. Meanwhile, Spike gets played over towards A. So we're gonna get it's, a 4v3. This is this is chaos. This is a pug map right now. <laughs> yeah, this this game is devolving. Things are getting silly. Aftershock further delay. There's only 20 seconds to yeah. plant, but Mars not really in a position to try to flood in. Spike what? The lineup a. from Evil Kick? Hunter's Fury now gonna Hunter's be earned. Fury. Yep. Xander still finds the kill somewhere though. Left. But again, the time is the issue. The BCJ has stepped out of the normal default plant position. So the Hunter's Fury comes up empty, but it doesn't make a difference. Evil can now all of a sudden make his way in to teleport back over. Xander, not to be bamboozled, the 1v1, and it's a long wide swing from Xander. He gets four in the round. What are we watching? <laughs> I mean, it is just chaos right now. Nothing is making sense. The players are definitely starting to lose their cool. I can tell you that. So much individualism in that round that could have been synced up with just a moment of pause. I mean, Sato was just caught in no man's land in mid. In that moment, just before Xander goes for that wide swing, patient, just waiting to get the crosshair onto the opposing omen. But Lucho had a paranoia that yes. went out. Evil Kick got the kill. He could have just waited for a second before jumping out, but left it to a 1v1. Things have just gotten so scrambled for these teams as the tension is rising. The weight of this game, as far as the standings in the group stage, getting through to playoffs, you can really see a bit of the nerves, the situation setting in. I think especially for Galoris yes. in that round, frankly. They yes. were in so many good positions. They just had to calm down and at any point link up with each other, but everything in the chain got broken. Oh, big time. Oh, man. I mean, again, it, this is such a pivotal match for Galaris. A winnable map number one goes 13-11 to M80. They stave off the comeback from M80 and map number two to win themselves 13-11. And now, what, you tally at least two rounds that Gallagher are going to be looking back on and say, ah, shoot, we had those. And this is a major one because that's an eco swing in a certain regard. Yeah, you're still in fighting form if you're Galaris, especially with the blades out and the possibility of a lockdown. But it's not going to be as good as it was, especially considering that that's a rolling thunder and a lockdown on the other side. And oh, boy, we're not going to pause here, Wyatt. We're going to come off the pause and go immediately into the all gas here through a long. M80 because of that just routed towards C where they'll be running into a couple of the Molotovs. Well, dealt with with these one shock dart from BCJ clears that up because the same passage, but the delay right now yep. is allowing for rotates. Oh, and the spam through the smoke also connects. That is huge for Galaris. Follow up though, same thing can be said over towards run. Garage Connector. Long route being hit by Sato. Again, remember, he's got the blades out, so he's going to have to deal with this sentry turret by way of pistol. Unless he can hit something long range. He's being held off. Hunter's Fury going to be called in. Lockdown, not going to find any detainment. Xander right back in towards the site. Hunter's Fury has not hit onto much. Now the flank is on the way over, and oh, it's all just the smoke that gets Sato through the sentry turret. Net does what he can, but it doesn't stop the onslaught of Sato for four in the round, and now Galaris get it back to within one. That is so sick. So much going on in that moment. I, it's impossible, really, for M80 to have the presence of mind that maybe... Why we're getting dark, our turret's getting dark covered and we're getting flanked. No, there's actually a lot happening in front of them. They cannot be paying attention to that in that moment. Thinking about that, that requires some One enemy remaining. astral brain activity. Sato just capitalizes, just shooting everybody in the side. Perfect <laughs> aim from him, as always. What a round, what a retake. I can't. I mean, Wyatt, this is round robin. Map match three <laughs> for these teams.
I know. And oh my goodness, I feel like this has got grand finals written all over it in terms of the small mistakes being capitalized on, the macro plays, the chess game, the individual pop offs. We've had five aces today. I know. It's like, crazy. Uh, by the way, there's still six more games in just the group stage yeah. before the playoffs. Yeah. The group stage. Like, I'm really not trying to blow smoke here because I'm like, uh, but this this tournament has been goddamn nuts. It really has These been. These games have just been bangers. We're back into the action. Full purchase for both squads. Rolling Thunder for the offensive M80. Locked down on the defensive side for Galar's at the ready. And M80, one of the first times on this half, are going to try to heavy stack A long. And same can be said here. This is the first time we've seen... The Killjoy setup on A. Double Nanos behind the usual path that Koala Noob would dash into. Can they find damage if not maybe a kill here? Doesn't make a difference. Nano Storms will get popped. There was no dash. It was just an updraft yeah. up top. Yeah. So one seriously important ultimate for either team. The lockdown from Dolores. Yeah, a part of the plan, a part of the reason why they just gave up A, but immediate aftershock. Ah, uh, yeah. Right onto that, it's not enough. The, the lineup missed. That yeah. molly didn't do damage. I think that was the intention from Net. The lockdown will force everybody out, but when they're on the site, here comes the Rolling Thunder from Nismo. Oh. Any second now. Oh, yeah, but BCJ falls, and Rude's gonna get deep. Rude gets super deep towards Sewers for two. Nismo trying to follow up off his own Rolling Thunder, can only get one. And it's all defense on the retake. Xander has to fight off the defuse, plus three members of the dark cover. Not gonna happen. What a flipping play from Rude to push up and take away the sewer angle after you called it. The aftershock and the nano swarm was placed a little bit too far off the left because Rude didn't put the lockdown in the corner. The smallest little difference makes such a big impact. And then it was just that rapid pace scaling into the site taking up that fight in sewer like you mentioned where they know the m80 players are going to have to just try and spill back in off the rolling thunder and the rolling thunder was just ended up being too late but it's not even really by virtue of when nismo used it it's just because galores were so damn fast those sewer players were just not ready for for the the haste there of oh the yeah retake. Well, I think it's kind of a combination of like the smallest of things. First and foremost, M80 are thinking, oh, we'll just delete this lockdown and just stay on site. But once the nano storm gets popped and all of a sudden they're like, oh, wait a second, lockdown's still up. They don't get as far back as maybe they were anticipating because the whole setup was meant to stay on site. And that's enough for then Rude to say, hey, they didn't delete my lockdown. I can get super far forward here. It's just all oh, those small little decisions. All right, I was definitely uh, caught up in the moment. I need to see now what's going to be going on with the economy when we get back into this too. Happy calling a timeout for M80. Oh yeah. Uh... Into the mix here. Yeah, this is uh, not the greatest buy from M80. It's just a new show over at C. They're oh, just slamming the site. Oh, the dark cover comes out. Paranoia right through that as well. But no, the spam is good. Rolling Thunder defensively coming through. Rude's going to try to contest this. Spamming down the smoke. He's getting lots of damage. The Aftershock to follow up, but Net still finds one. And somehow, M80 are still alive in full force. Health is low across a number of members, but Xander, deep in the sight, maybe is able to connect for enough damage. Say the last one left. Operator in hand, he can't do anything. And it's just the slimmest of margins. Lots of damage, but the quick play from M80 works out. They're going to pull a bit of a thrifty. They're going to get credit for one, but call it what it is. They just literally ran into the site. <laughs> they just ran into the site. I was so certain that Luke Zhou was going to uh, use his ultimate to teleport away. Get back out to safety. He was caught over at platform and tried to fight off his own paranoia. Mm. And then the rest of his teammates feel like, uh, we got to help this guy. But they're just dribbling into the site disconnected from each other they tried to do way too much in that situation yes way too much you know i i would have much preferred going for the percentage play there just getting into retake position
Well, the game gives them credit for the black white thrifty earned. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to tell with stingers earned. and guardians being purchased, but hey, they kept it underneath the threshold. So, again, black light can smile. More activations, more exposure. Get yourself a comfy chair. This is pivotal round right here. I mean, I won't say this is the ball game, but it becomes dire straits if Gallers don't find a way to pull this one back because they still have the op, they still have a full purchase, but after that, they, I mean, they don't have much of anything. So this, in certain regard, is the map, and wouldn't you know it? It's just Luke Show spamming, and he finds first blood. Oh, Ridiculous. boy. Ridiculous. Oh, boy. Oh, they boy. Don't clear it. Net focus forward, just scared of someone peeking from the top side of garage. Feels like we're just two seconds into the round and it's crumbled. Oh boy. What do you say? I mean, the round is Amazing. over. It's just over. Piece of J's been seen. Crossfire setup is good. Tip tap, tip tap. Not ready yet. And BCJ will, well, give it the good old heave-ho college try here. And it gets one pretty cleanly. Swaps over to the Vandal, fresh ammunition, but the cape gives him away. And Rube will get three in the round. 11-11, make a wish. We got round 23 coming up. Yeah, and similarly to the end of Sunset, paying attention here very closely to the ultimates that are going to be online at the end. I mean, even that three-piece from Rude gets him quite close to the lockdown. Every little Power's out. matters. M80, their, their lack of clearing that corner. Mm. That is tough. That is really tough. It's Valorant, baby. Here we go. M80. Ooh. Yep. Oh, my goodness. And Luke Show. Oh, I mean, he is legitimate. Like, what? He's just skipping his way up A main. And now Rude's in trouble, the other side of the map. M80 finding some success to get on towards C, but the problem is you've got Saddle deep in awe. Oh, he's holding with an operator. Plant will still be successful though for Nismo. Planted. And it's gonna be a garage post plant. Not what you want, but it is workable for M80, especially considering that Gallers are split. Yeah, at least try to get that Stinger close range. Never mind, Stinger yeah. off the field. Two remaining, Nismo, the healthier of the pair. No utility to work with. Oh, good from Evil Dick. Leaves it now just down to Nismo. 1v3 situation for him. Flashes out, avoids it for the most part, but the quick peek from Luke Show gets Gallers on the map point. And the finances are not good for M80. What Luke Show is doing in this series is a beyond MVP performance. 32 kills map one, 23 map two. What is he sitting at right now? Another 22? Just yeah. easily beyond 20 kills every game? They just crush Xander in a main. Tucked in the corner, lit up. Wants to teleport out, but feels like if he does, he's just going to get gunned down. It's just... Caught between a rock and a hard place. M80 buy is decent enough you know, due to that plant in part really helping out their ability to get more of that util and even some of just these light armors into the yeah. some of yeah. the handles. Look at the setup though across the board. You've got an alarm bot in towards mid. Xander. Oh, it's difficult and it's a shorty to kick us off. I mean, that is about as dissected as it could have possibly gotten in terms of utility from M80, but the difference maker is a flippin' shorty. Quality, though, quickly over back towards B, has now isolated Luke Show inside the site, and Quality gets a second. There's gonna be a plant. Nismo getting the plants as well. That means the Rolling Thunder will be ready. Spike planted. What a difference maker this could be. The entire post plant's going long. Oh, if you ever wanted Sato to get into sight faster, <laughs> it would be right here. They're going to have to challenge this, though, and they know it. BCJ, oh, good for the opener. Aftershock going to be spent, Last and there it is. Yurongo, Sato, good eliminations coming through. Sato for a 1v2. Swap back to the Vandal. He has no idea where Kualanuba has gone, though, and time is of the essence. Cloud up and over. Net trying to hold the angle, trying to get it to halfway. Not going to happen. We're going extra innings. It's, it's only right that we're going to OT in this game. Switching sides. Sick play oh from God. either side when they need it most. Koala Noob just 
sending it through B. Pathing that hasn't really been taken by M80 just yet. All the way through window, all the way into C, that link pivot, so nice. Lovely from the M80 duelist stepping up the very, very last round. Again, this is the team that is 2-0 against the team that is 0-2. First place yeah. in the group versus last place in the group. And we said before this started that the 0-2 does not represent the skill level of Galores at all. And you're seeing exactly why. They are just as good, neck and neck, with any other team in this group. And it wouldn't be <laughs> in overtime without a tech pause to kick us off. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, when, uh, it's just calms things down a little bit. I mean, this is playing with my emotions more than my high school ex girlfriend. Legitimately, <laughs> back and forth, <laughs> up and down, it's a roller coaster. Oh no. That's <sighs> tough. Wow. What? I mean, this has been such a fun series. I mean, legitimately, between this and, well, on top of that, also, we had our first series. I mean,. Are we joking? And now it's just down to raw Valorant. I mean, no more talk about trying to save up for ultimates. No more talk about stacking him to win a round. This is just no, about who's better. None of that. I'm interested to see what risks are going to be taken with purchasing up operators here as well. Koala... I think typically gets more value with the op than he actually has in this series. They've been playing around him nice at some points, just baiting him into bad peaks even and getting kills on him. The rifling has definitely seemed to have more impact for him today. Oh, yeah. And I mean, let's be honest here, Wyatt. I, I, you know, I'm just going to counteract my own point here, talking about you know ultimates being off the table. That's not necessarily true because we've had more three plus kill action rounds uh, in this game than maybe any other to this point. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Unfortunately, though, it's going to Luke Joe getting his ult. <laughs> that's not, that's not, no, more than yeah, likely, yeah. if anyone gets it, it's him. <laughs> Yeah, and, here's from the uh, shadows, everybody. Whoa. Yeah, that's, <laughs> doesn't really inspire fear in the enemies, tragically. <laughs> but, uh, pain. Listen, uh, doesn't exactly need the ultimate to have big impact on the game. And this guy is just on a totally different level today. <laughs> I'll say. I need to reboost my stamina if we're going to be having matches like this in group stage. No, it's crazy. Are I we, mean, Kevin? These are just, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I listen, I have, there's no coffee left. There's no Red Bull. There's nothing. I'm just yeah. going, I'm trying to go off pure adrenaline here. Crazy scenes. Well, hopefully this will be resolved pretty shortly here. We've been pretty fortunate to see oh. things come and go pretty quickly. And it looks like that will be the case once again as the whole stage will illuminate that lovely shades of blue and green, which means that we're probably pretty close to getting back into the action. And that is the case. So Love it will be M80 it. starting this uh, this overtime on the defense first. Nothing crazy except for the Odin purchase for BCJ, but that's not too crazy in the scheme of things. No, he loves to use that weapon on defense. And it was a real big issue for Raida to deal with in their game yesterday. We'll see if it is equally as troublesome for Galorist to contend with. First round of OT getting some spam into a lobby. That's one area where the Odin can be very dangerous when you're trying yep. to make that cross. But comes without consequence. Galorist not actually being affected by it at all. And instead, it's going to be just a little bit of a play with some focus over towards Garage. Shock Dark followed up with the Owl Drone getting deep through window. If that gets a peek through it, it could be pivotal towards the goal call for this play through C-Long. But Nets timing, absolutely brilliant. Sato dashing back over, trying to assist on this little 1v2 moment, but it's, it could be quality with the rest of M80 still holding on nicely to the backside of the site. I mean, it was a hell of an effort for Galarus to open up space through Garage to allow that play through long, but Net just avoids it. And now Spaghetti's on the floor. M80 just doing 
what they do best on this defense. It is just their standard response when they have a number of players alive. The sea hit is coming in. They are sending it through spawn. Look at the mini map in this moment. The fault line comes in. Scaling is perfect to get in. Help net back sight. The trio there together. Nismo, Koala, net. Every single time, man. You just have to be ready for that M80 flood through C main every single yep. time yep. you hit that site. And that's just another moment where you have to highlight how good Net is as that lockdown player. Stays away from the action at C long, creates opportunity for his teammates to get in a little bit easier with the first blood. And so now, advantage M80. Swap the sides, do it again. Sato, glass cannon, operator in hand for him. Nothing else. Smoke dissipates. Dicey moment, doesn't get the right timing and whoa, doesn't pull the trigger. Wants one more peek at it. Flash being held or a fault line for Nismo. There's the dash over the top, but they're out of it. We'll stay 5v5. At least forcing them back. Our M80 getting all of that control of A long. So, you know, making it feel like they could just execute into the site at any given moment. And that looks to be what they're actually going yeah. to do. Arango has pivoted to A though. Not ready. And Sato is leaving. So the setup. Not ideal. Here comes the hit off that recon. Oh, what a reveal. But do they know that quality was this far forward? Fall lines are getting exchanged. You're on inside the site. He does well. Evil now can now step back into the play if he needs to. Aftershock's gonna land. Snap from Urango's good Spike for another. 2v2. Xander and Net on site. Rude and Luke seconds left. trying to work their way back in. Spike planted. Rude headed up top into heaven. Both players from M80. They are Cover going out. going back. Concerned about some attempt of the flank and doing that. They will dodge any utility coming through. Paranoia yeah. doesn't do a thing. Xander headed over to long now. They know, of course, that net is in the corner. They isolated perfectly, but where is Xander gone? 1v1 situation for the win. The shots are good! Xander takes it! Luke Show visibly upset about it, but at the end of the day, M80 just a touch better will stay undefeated. And on the flip side, maybe more pressingly so, Galoris is going to reflect back on these three maps and say, oh, shoot, because wow, was this a winnable series for them. They're going to go 0-3 in the group stage, having to win their next two now. I got two 13-11s and a 14-12 in this series. We said Galoris being 0-2 doesn't do justice to how good they are compared to the field. Being 0-3 definitely does not do justice for how good this team has looked. Every map coming down to the wire, dead even with M80. And frankly, Luke Show and Sato were just, I think, the best in the server in terms of firepower today. Easy. But that wasn't enough to get them over the finish line. It was the protocols, some of these responses from M80, where they are just so well practiced they're just this well-oiled machine in so many of the situations that come up like those sea flood moments those swift entries into the site there to defend it it's those kind of rounds that just keep putting m80 a touch above the competition without question i mean it's just wow the heartbreak for calaris i mean does it get any steeper than that luke show bails him out of what was a very heavily favored m80 first map puts them into fighting form sato wakes up for map number two breaks ankles with the neon follows up with a great start here on haven a couple yeah. of missed opportunities here and there but it's m80 who will win the day and an exhausting one as we went all the way the distance and all three maps both of our series but that'll do it for myself shift and that guy right there wyatt so handsome so good looking we're gonna send things back oh, to the desk stop. to finish off the day i'm not gonna stop i'm only gonna start <laughs> back to the desk to break down everything the action we saw the M80 fans, they were sweating just a little bit, but we told you guys, you can sweat, but it's okay because M80, they always got it at the end and they do it one more time. They take it all the way to overtime and they close it out in the 14 to 12 on Haven. They continue to be the one and only undefeated team gumpers and it has to feel good for them. I was partially cooking, I, I'm just gonna say. I think, I think here <laughs> they did a great job. Like, 
And the fact that they were able to take it so far into that third series, uh, at Galaris, at the, the team that wasn't expected to even get close to beating M80, it's insane. And I think, I think the biggest feat of all is like, I mean, you could tell the passion that they put into the game just off the end. Luxo looked super upset with the fact that they couldn't really pull through with the performance because they could taste how close they were. But it's just the grouping stage, which I feel like definitely shows that there's more opportunity to come back from this upset. And it came down to the 1v1 at the very end. But honestly, it was the whole work that the side of M80 were putting up to make sure that this win was going to go their way, even if it took them that overtime. And at this point, they've played more, more overtimes than anybody else in the tournament so far, Stary. But this is just the resilience that the team has to be able to close out the maps and something that they talked about before that a lot of their maps, they go very intense, they go very close to each other, but it doesn't matter because they know how to close it out compared to everybody else. I honestly just feel like M80 just really love Valorant. Like they just want to play <laughs> as many rounds as possible. But what's really crazy here is that Galotis had 19 first kills compared oh, yeah. to M80 that had seven, which means uh, all those rounds, they literally were up in the man advantage. But I feel like with these standards comps, like I said, it really comes down to those fundamentals. It comes down to teamwork, especially if both teams are playing those standard comps. Um, it really just comes down to like teamwork. But I feel like for Galotis' side, Luxo and Sato was really just putting in the work. They were the ones that were carrying the team, getting multi frags, really opening up the rounds. But the rest of the team just couldn't close it out. And M80, we've always talked about this. We always talked about how good they are at adjusting, how good they are at coming together and really trading off each other after that first blood. They're really good I'm so happy. at making my. Yeah, I'm so sorry, but I was gonna. I was just gonna say something stupid. They're really good at making my blood pressure go very high. I feel like every game <laughs> I ever watch with M80 in it, I'm, I'm like sitting at the edge of my chair, like gripping the seat. I, I like <laughs> right there. I genuinely thought. I remember you guys were like, "Compers, you might be like, you might foresee the future. This is crazy. This is crazy." Boom! My dreams crushed. You guys jinxed me, and I'll never forget it. I'll never forget. <laughs> it, it was good. It was good on the set of Galores. We, we gotta be honest. And, and it's not fair to ever underestimate them. Not for this match. Not coming into this match. And not for the next matches that they have. Because they are still the number one team of Brazil. They still took M80 to that third map. To that overtime. They saw and they got the, the chance to showcase those heroics. And those individual players. And now it does become a lot harder for them. We don't know exactly how it's going to play out. Because in the group stage... We don't know who's going to continue to win, who's going to start losing. Uh, so we don't know what the future is like for them in the group stage mm -hmm. and even making it to playoffs. But I think Galoris has showcased individually there's, that they're such a good team gumpers. And uh, I mean, honestly, towards the end, when it goes to the overtime and into that 1v1, it could have gone either way. I I genuinely think it could have. The, the unfortunate part was Sata was in such a good spot as the Jet with the op. And if they had just played the patience game a little longer, there was no information on coming. They were moving way too early. The rotations were coming in way too quick. They really needed to just chill out for a second and play the quiet game Eddie likes to play all the time. And for me, it was it was that given moment where I was like, yeah, the, that movement right there honestly might have just put the whole game at risk. But hey, I mean, for the M80 fans, once again, they have to be feeling good. Yeah, you suffer a little bit, but that makes it even more fun to be supporting this team to see how far they can make it in Ascension. So once again, a reminder for everybody to make sure you check out that giveaway from Blacklight. They're giving away a chair so you can scan that QR code or check out that pin uh, tweet or the pin message on the chat to see how you can get it. Well, you can get one of those ultimate gaming chairs. This is everything that we have for right now, but we're going to throw it to a break. We're going to have an interview with one of the m80 players and when we come back we're gonna close out the day and talk about tomorrow
Hi guys, how are you doing? I'm Valina. I'm here with Nismo. He just won this exhausting match against uh, Galoris. The first question that I want to ask you is how are you feeling right now and what are your thoughts about this last match that you guys played? I mean, uh, we're feeling good overall. Uh, after winning, obviously everyone feels really good. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do, so we're just getting ready for playoffs. And yeah, overall the team feels really good. Great. So the second question that I want to ask you is what are your expect expectations for tomorrow's match against TSM? Uh, same thing that we've been going through, the same mindset that we have every game. Uh, just come in, play our game, and obviously get ready for playoffs. And uh, we played against them in the past, so we know what to work in. Great. Uh, we saw that you posted on Twitter that you weren't happy with your performance. What is missing for us to see that 100% from Nismo? I mean, again, just I wasn't in my zone, uh, missing the shots I should have been missing, uh, maybe even some util that I should have been throwing. So overall, just improving my game overall, uh, flashes, shooting back, and I'll be focusing on that. For sure. Thank you very much, Nismo. Thank you. Guys, uh, it's over for today, but tomorrow we have a lot of Valorant, a lot, a lot. So we're waiting for you tomorrow. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Valinda and Nismo. As we got to hear a little bit more on that insight that he has on his own performance, the performance of the team, playing for themselves, practicing, and even knowing for that TSM matchup how that that's going to look like. But we're all very happy to see this M80 team succeed and do so good. And Saribon, we talked about it towards the beginning of the day. Something uh, that Nismo has been working on was improving as a team and evolving with the team. And I, I, we're absolutely seeing it, especially in this close, close matches when you need to shine a little more. Oh, it's there. Sorry, this All mic good. is muted, <laughs> as I was saying. <laughs> M80, you can really see like their resilience and how they are as a team with these overtime matches. Like when they're down and they're bringing it back and bringing those comebacks and really making the rounds really close. Of course, there are little times where they are a bit sloppy, but their comeback game is strong. Like they will not go down with a fight. And like going into OT and being able to win out these games is even more impressive. Just shows how well of a team M80 is. Well, and it, it it's very interesting because now we get the chance to look at the standings to see how they're looking, and they're looking pretty good. Gomper is at 3-0 so far, pretty much guaranteed playoffs, playoffs, but as we mentioned before, we don't really know. It's not 100% because there's a lot of things that you need to take into account to see who's going to make it and who's not going to make it, especially with how close competition has been. Dude, I think there's two things that are incredibly crazy. Number one, M80 is constantly battling for the top spot on the throne. They've been doing it since North America. They're doing it now in America's ascension. And the biggest thing that I'm noticing is they're always going OT or having a fake comeback. Can we please stop? <laughs> like, I, I, there are sometimes my heart can't take it. I got a heart condition. Let's chill out on that. <laughs> Number two, Galoris. Imagine the, the team that you would consider the worst with an O3 record literally almost beating the top spot. And it just goes to show, there's, there is no difference in the skill here. Everyone is just as good as the other. But they're not the worst though. They're the number one seed of Brazil and they've been doing so good. It's just, it seems like they're still getting used to the Latin experience and learning how to close out those maps and those matches. And that's what's been the hardest thing for them. But tomorrow we have every single team playing. We're back to the three series days and we're gonna have All Knights first taking down Reta. That's the regional matchup that we saw in the grand finals where Reta took that win. We have two game going against Galaris once again that regional matchup of Brazil where Galores took the win, so it might be a chance for them to do it again. And the last one, regional matchup is going to be TSM going against M80. So we go very, very mm. local for these matches tomorrow. <laughs> and Gompers, I'm so excited. I'm pretty excited too. And it's great because it's, it's, it's every single team gets its own exposure and now closure as well to, to I guess, who is the best in their own regions, right? TSM, M80. I, that one I'm very excited for. Well, obviously, I'm biased. I'm from North America. So we'll we'll see how that goes. In in a way, it seems like for Latin America and Brazil, the ones the teams that have been the number one seed uh, have not looked as good sometimes as the num or number two seed. So there is a chance for them to make that one the statement stereo bond of, well, you might have been the number one seed when we played in challenges, but now we're a different team and we're ready to win and show you why.
Yeah, I mean, all these teams have a lot of time to practice, and especially when you lose, you have so much to lose from those matches as well. So all of these revenge matches and these rematches are going to be pretty exciting. We're all very excited to see how that's going to play out. For everybody at home, make sure you get some rest. You also get to celebrate your teams getting those wins, especially that M80 and the whole family that we saw in chat today. So get some rest, get ready for tomorrow, because tomorrow, there's three matches. You cannot miss them, so we'll see you then. Eu assisto a bot de vocês, velho. Vai fazer a mesma coisa. 